Hello everybody, E here. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours and everybody. Um, if you're not in the United States, happy whatever you celebrate. If there's nothing going on today, then don't celebrate anything. Okay, you do you. Alright, um, first I want to give a shout out to Landon. Uh, my buddy Landon, he is a amazing dude, great guy. I'm going to link him down in the doobly-doo in case I forget to put a link up here. But if I remember, then it's up there. If not, just click down the doobly-doo. He did a, in fact, I'll link to his, the, his specific video, um, five books that he's thankful for. Um, I got to thinking, and yet he mentions me in there. This is not a shameless plug. Um, I just want you guys to, for real, go check his stuff out. He does some videos on me also. He does an Edward Lauren Theorist, which is just weird um, as far as I'm concerned. But hey, he, he does it uh, of his own accord. But I am inspired by Landon today, so I am going to do his top five books that I'm thankful for. I'm going to start right off and get it right out of the way because we all know it's coming. There's a Stephen King book. Here it is. Uh, Dolores Claiborne is the very first novel I read by Stephen King when I was, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know really how old I was when I used to flip through uh, The Cycle of the Werewolf, but that was the first book I actually looked at um, that kind of made me realize that Stephen King existed, um, and then I saw uh, Pet Cemetery when I was nine, and then I finally stole this one out of a mailbox, um, my, our own mailbox, but it was my mother's uh, subscription to the Stephen King Library. This just came out in 1993. Um, I hope that's right. I think that's right. My childhood's kind of a blur. But uh, I think it was 93, and I grabbed this one out, and I read it over the course of two days. A uh, 13-year-old with 13-year-old attention span, and I read this in two days. Two or three days, something like that. But I know I blew right through it, and then I snuck it into my mom's collection as if, you know, <laughs> as if nothing ever happened. Um, but this is... I'm thankful for this book because it introduced me to Stephen King, and if you've been watching the channel at all, then you know how much of a Stephen King nut I am. Next, uh, most of the rest of these have to do with my own writing. Um, if you don't know, I am a writer. Uh, you can look me up on Amazon, whatever. Uh, or you down there in the doobly-doo, there's always links to my books. It'll say, buy a book, and it'll take me, take you, not me, take you to the my Amazon page. The very first one is the book I read just before I wrote my debut novel under this name, Bay's End. That's uh, The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. This book destroyed me, um, and it gave me uh, a appreciation for books that do not end well. Um, now, I, I've been a Stephen King fan for the longest time, and some of his books are sad, but nothing was ever quite as sad as this. Not even Pet Cemetery. Um, this book is just, there, there are points of Pet Cemetery that make you feel hopeful. There are points, I, there, there's no hope in this book whatsoever. Um, in fact, my friend Tracy um, over on Twitter just got through, Tracy Robinson, she just got, got through reading it and wrote a terrific review for it. Next up, um, I'm going to talk about After Dark by Haruki Murakami. And tomorrow's video is going to be themed along this line also, as far as authors like Haruki Murakami. But this book specifically, the absolute worst piece of advice I ever got. I was working with a publisher, and the editor told me that people don't read certain types of books anymore. They don't read omniscient books. They don't read... The only books they care about is first-person thrillers. Um, literally, that's... That's all that they said, and that, 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 that's, that's what they said, that's all people cared about. Um, I got caught up with this publisher, and I started to believe everything that was being fed to me. Um, and the best thing I ever did was read this book, which I have to thank my friend Gregor Zane for pointing me in this direction. Because if I had not read this book, then the Bay's End series would not have went to the places that it went to. I would never have considered those things possibilities. Um, we would have gotten a lot more, uh, you, you would have gotten a lot more books like Life After Dane or Hope for the Wicked, and some people might, might think that that would have been great, and maybe you would have been happy with it, but I wouldn't have been happy with it. Um, I am not 
I have never wanted to be a thriller writer. I have played a thriller writer um, in several several points in my life. I have been a thriller writer, but that's not what I want to do anymore. So this book opened up the possibilities again because it's a relatively new book, at least relatively new translation, and he's a popular author, and that's all he does is stuff like this. That's why I point people to this book when they are when they want to read Haruki Murakami, but they don't know where to start because it's short and it's it's a perfect example, sample, of his work. And again, Gregor, thank you. Thank you so much. Next up, we have... Uh, I'm going to leave one for last. Uh, I, I was going to do it next, but I think I want to leave that for last. Uh, one Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. I read, I've read this book three times. Every single point in time in my life that I've read it has meant something completely different to me. The first time I read it, it was a... It was uh, letting me know that I was okay for being different. Um, it was okay to maybe not be all there all the time. The next time I read it was right after, um, well, not right after. I mean, heroin, uh, any drug addiction and recovery lasts, you know, your, your entire life. Once your brain is chemically altered um, and it wants that substance, just like, you know, whether it be nicotine, caffeine, heroin, cocaine, any of that stuff. Um... I don't know, probably about a year, all this t all this time right here is is blurry, right around 2001. I had just met my wife, uh, and she's to thank for me getting off the, the junk. Um, but I just met Shell, and I had finally gotten away from the drugs and the people who were enabling the drug use and making it very easy to get a hold of product. I got away from those people, and I picked this book up again, and it... It was a, it, it really showed me that life is, it, even if you're stuck in a place, and this is the chief metaphor of the book, if you're stuck in a place, that does not mean that you will be there forever. And you can move on out of that place and grow, because I'd already grown, grown once, um, you know, realizing that I could be weird. And then I grew again, realizing that I didn't have to be this addict. And then I read it again, and it was about the time, right after I wrote Bay's End and published that, and it was well received, and I realized that sometimes the people in your life that you trust and that you respect are not the best people for you. Um, sometimes they are, well, a lot of the times they're just there for themselves. And that's what this story showed me also as far as the Nurse Ratchet character was um sorry I'm getting a little emotional as far as the Nurse Ratchet character she was a person in a position of power that was supposed to be helping these people but she's the villain and to this day I call this one of the best horror novels I've ever read um I don't put it on any list because I know so many people disagree with that um but I believe that horror is every in, in every genre horror is conflict Horror is meeting a group of people or characters or whatever and not wanting anything bad to happen to them and then something bad happens to them. Or there's the threat of something bad happening to them. Anyways, let's move on before I start crying. Um, another thing is, Landon, your video made me sob up when you were talking about me, dude. And, yeah, I mean, feelings mutual, but I, I appreciate you. I do. Uh... So let's get into the next one so we can go ahead and wrap this up uh, so I can get out of the shed. It's cold out here, y'all. Um, it is going on toward night. This is the fourth video I've shot. So we are going to jump into uh, You by Carolina Kepnes. This book came, around, and it's it's this book as much as it is, as it is the circumstances around this book. Um, I fell in love with this book right off the bat. I am a big supporter of books where the bad guy is the main character. Um, because we're not, nobody is 100% bad, nobody is 100% evil. Um, going back to the whole drug addiction thing, you know, you look at people a different way after you've been the bad guy. And to this day, I'm still a bad guy in certain circles, you know. If you, if you run around certain circles of the horror community, I'm the villain. Um, because I hold my peers to a certain standard. And when they don't want to be held to a certain standard, they get their feelings hurt. But with this book, I read this book, and 
I read this with, uh, it was a recommendation by a person that I probably shouldn't have been friends with at the time. Um, but I will always, always appreciate them turning me on to this book because I probably would, I, I know I wouldn't have read it because it was being marketed as a suspense thriller. No, a romantic thriller. Romantic suspense. That's it. Romantic suspense. It was being marketed as that, and I just don't care for that. Boy, did this change, <laughs> did, you, did this change that. I still don't think this is a romantic thriller, um, or suspense, uh, sorry, romantic suspense. I still don't think that, um, the relationship in here, I don't think there's anything romantic about it. If I'm wrong, sue me. But the relationships in this book, it, it really, it really touches on some key aspects of, again, sometimes the best people in our lives are the worst people for us at the time. Sometimes the worst people, that the people who we, we perceive as the worst are the best people for us at the time. It goes both ways. And that's the thought I'm going to leave you on today. So these are the five books that I am most thankful for um, that changed my life. Landon, once again, thank you so much for your video, dude. I really do appreciate it. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. It's been a list of sorts. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.